Now, here's something you can see a, a whole lot more common, and this is um, heat damage and some wear and tear stuff, right? These right here are what are known of as blisters, okay? This is extremely common. Um, yes, much, much more common on roofs. Um, doesn't matter if it's a asphalt or a fiberglass matte shingle. It's much more common on roofs that are have poor ventilation, meaning that the shingles are just getting too hot, right? And you see these little black spots here. This is how this happens, right? So believe it or not, and you'll believe it after this, but each one of these little black spots is had a the reason why they're called blisters is because before they were a black spot they actually looked like a blister right this is the blistered shingle before the the top of the blisters pops off with somebody walking on it or just you know the changing of the season and things the roof the, the expansion and contraction a little bit and it just popped the top of that brittle um you know granular layer off of there just on the, these these little tops right this is not again these contractors these guys this is not hail damage never has been never will be i don't care if the hail came down and knocked off the part the top of that granule blister and made it look like that that's still not hail damage right we're looking for that bruising that we talked about earlier right this is super duper common you'll see it everywhere right whether it's far north you know south, south florida wherever it is this is extremely common not hail damage. It also doesn't necessarily mean that the roof isn't repairable either. It's just extremely common. And basically what happens with a blister is that um, during the heat of the summer, the asphalt uh, or maybe some, there was, like I was saying earlier, there might be a little bit of a s small percentage of moisture trapped either somewhere in the aggregate of the granules or in the asphalt or whatever. And when it gets super duper hot, when it's not properly ventilated, um, it will that that moisture will expand, or some of the other volatiles that are in the shingles that that whatever's in the asphalt may those might expand slightly, and create a little tiny bubble, right? Or and it'll produce a blister like this, and then over time, you know, a season or two later, the tops will pop off, right? Very common blisters. Um, another thing which goes back to the the heating and Heating and cooling, right, and expansion and contraction of, of uh, materials is the not the shingle itself, um, but the wood underneath, right? So a, a common thing that you'll see um, that contractors, again, will try to say, well, this is wind damage or this is, how can you say the hail didn't do this, right? <clears throat> and that is um, these uh, thermal expansion cracks. Get access to my professional network as a fast track certified grad. And let's get your career started. Not in 90 days, not in six months, but right now to learn more and get signed up, visit adjustertv.com slash certify. And what happens is, is that plywood underneath four by eight sheets, of plywood, um, it's wood, right? And they will, when it, there's high moisture, temperature change, they'll expand a little bit and they'll contract. It's like what your house does. You hear your house creaking in the fall and in the spring because it's like it's expanding and contracting with the change of the season, right? Wood's doing it up on the roof. Shingles are nailed to the, the wood, right? So you have a shingle that's across two boards, right? And then it has other ones that are stuck down to it, right? So it's that's kind of sort of semi-rigid. And then those boards will expand even just a little bit and it, it'll cause those tears. And those are basically, the shingles are just torn. Uh, a blister would be bad enough to get all the way down to the mat. I guess technically they are down to the mat because it's 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 between the matting and the granular layer. Scott just asked, can a blister be bad enough to get all the way down to the mat? And it bubbles the, the granular layer, right? And then, then that pops off. So the matting will be exposed, right? But it's not something that's covered by insurance, right? Almost none of this stuff is covered by insurance except for wind and hail. So another thing that you'll see, and this picture doesn't show it, but I, I put this picture in here because if you were going to walk on this roof, where would you walk? Would you walk over here, right? Would you walk over here? Or 
Would you walk here, right? I'm putting my ladder up right down here in this corner and I wanna walk up this valley and I may hop on over and stand up on top of here, right? You know, you can walk up and down valleys super duper easily, even on really steep roofs. This is probably a, probably a 12. I'm walking over here if I need to, to do a test square up here, right? I might just like, I probably will do a test square right between these two dormers up, up here and stand up here. But, you know, who else is gonna be up here walking around, right? Well, maybe uh, this is the Griswold's house and um, Clark has gotta go up and put, put up, install and take down Christmas lights every single year and he puts them all over this sucker, right? Or maybe they changed the siding and then they had a big hailstorm the next spring and they had to change the siding again. And so you had siding installers up here walking around on this thing, right? When they built the house, right? Maybe this is the original roof. Installers were up here walking around there installing windows, right? Um, the, they might, you know, walk across this when they're cleaning out the gutters or who knows, whatever it is, right? My point here is, is that we have um, high traffic areas on roofs, right? Even though there's not a whole lot of traffic, the roofs are designed to take a certain amount of of um, foot traffic, but not a whole lot more than like just the occasional kind of a thing. Like, you know, do, getting up there to do work once or twice a year. Um, a lot of cases, these areas here at the by valleys, um, next to dormers, places where people are, if they need to get up on the roof and, and climb around, they're probably gonna climb near these things so they can hold on to stuff, right? You can grab onto the edges of the, those corner pieces and the edges of the fascia and, and pull yourself up, right? Um, if you're walking around for any reason on this roof, um, it's gonna cause, it's gonna scuff the granules and, and create footfalls, right? Especially if it's done more than a few times. Also, all the rain, Whenever it rains or snows, all the water, when it runs off this roof, is going to funnel down into this area. And, and water, believe it or not, uh, will erode anything, including shingles, right? So if you live in a, in a part of the country where you have beautiful, green, long, lush summers, it means you got a lot of rain, which means this roof is getting hit with a lot of rain. And so I'm expecting to see washed away granules here and here and here. Also, oftentimes along the ridge, which is one of the safer places to walk around upon this roof, right? Um, so foot traffic, if you're looking at stuff, and the whole point with this is basically to say, if you're up on a roof like this and you do your test square up here and you got some roofer being like, well, what do you, you can't say this roof doesn't have damage and he's down here with all this footfall stuff, but you don't see anything here, right? There's just nothing, right? Then this roof is fine, right? This is, the footfall stuff is pre-existing. You know, it's it's not caused by the storm. It's not exacerbated by the storm. It just is what it is, right? And you can find them on almost every single roof that you walk on. Um, but in the, out of here in a, a big open area or up here, right? You're not finding any any anything that looks like a hail hit that you can say this. There's a soft spot there. Um, there's some black spots that all have a corresponding bruise with them, some little bit of loose granules. And it looks like a hail hit the spot, right? If you're not finding that. Sorry, the guy can bellyache all he wants to about how he's seeing all this stuff down here. Well, we're going to file for a supplement. Go for it. This, I mean, and maybe you can get the other adjuster into some other adjuster to pay for it. But, you know, ethics goes both ways. I can't pay for it if I know that it's not hail. You know, you'd be surprised at how much stuff can grow on roofing shingles. Learn how to identify damage caused by hail versus damage caused by moss. And yes, this is a real thing. Watch right here.